One of the big news stories yesterday was Rishi Sunak uh, breaking his word on the bonfire of EU laws. Now, the truth of the matter is, is that we, we, we did Brexit, we left, and lots was going to change. It seems to some in the Tory party that Sunak is rowing back on that a little and is doing his usual thing. And many Tory MPs overnight launching scathing attacks for what they see as a massive, massive U-turn. Kemi Badenoch, the Business and Trade Secretary, uh, confirmed the move on yesterday, putting a stop to a key pledge. And this is the interesting thing. This was a pledge of Sunak's leadership campaign last summer. He said he wouldn't touch this now. He he says he's going to burn some. Staunch Brexiteers have gone absolutely nuts. Listen to Kemi Badenoch for a sec. I, I asked uh, uh, MPs who had been in that meeting what they wanted to remove, and they couldn't say anything. And I think that is uh, more illustrative of the problem we have, that there are too many people who spend a lot of time talking. I need to do the thinking and the doing. So, You're talking about Tory MPs. Um, who talk, I'm, I'm, can't talking, do. Um, I'm talking. There are many people across Parliament in the media and in the commentariat who make a lot of noise, but they're not the ones who have to do the doing. I trust the officials I'm working with. I do feel that they need direction and guidance. And actually, we need to stop turning uh, the process of reform into one where we're laboriously trying to preserve uh, EU legislation, which is what's happening. What I've done is change the approach. And I think that it's the right thing uh, for the legislative programme that we have and for the country. Very interesting. Kemi Badenoch saying she's changed the approach. The critics are saying, hold on a minute, Sunak said he'd get rid of 4,000 EU laws. There will be a bonfire of Brexit rubbish, and he said the wrong word. She's rowing back on that. What do you think? 03444991000. Joining me now, a good friend of mine, Gina Miller, leader of True and Fair, the party. Gina, welcome to breakfast. How are you? Hi, Jeremy. I'm fine, thank you. I got your joke. You what? It's the pollen joke. Did you like it? Pollen tish. Nobody else got it. Thank you, Jean. Um, so let's have this out, right? Because you and I will be on separate sides of this fence. Whatever anybody says, Brexit it happened. The, the doomsayers said, oh, yeah. it's not going to work. It's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be a nightmare. The people that got it done said, no, that's the will of the British people. Rishi Sunak, very quietly through the mouth of Kemi Badenoch, on Wednesday put a stop to a key pledge from his leadership campaign. He said he would burn at a Brexit bonfire 4,000 laws. Actually, what Kemi Badenoch is saying, unless I'm wrong, is she talks about approach, but basically they're putting it on the back burner. Does this, in your mind, begin a shift of not policy but feeling at the top of the Tory government? No, I don't think so. I think it's the dawning of reality, because the idea that you could have just scrapped 4,000 odd laws on 31st of December through the sunset clause, as they put it, was completely fantasy. Um, you know, it took us 40 odd years to get these laws. We actually were instrumental in drafting a lot of them, our, our um, lawyers that were in the EU working on this. And we have created so much uncertainty in the UK our economy is suffering, our inward investment is suffering, you know, um, credibility, confidence, everything is on the floor. And what this law would have done by just burning everything, as you say, is it's a wrecking act. It would have then compromised our environmental law, our economy, our consumer protection, our intellectual property. They need time. Actually, in international law, the treaty we signed up to, it gives us till 2026. So we need to take time. It's being done too speedily, without scrutiny, without parliamentary involvement, and it will cause constitutional chaos. We can't do more damage. We so need so would, it, would it be fair to say from your point of view, because I want to look at both sides, that the rhetoric that, you know, that the, the Remainers always attack, the rhetoric that got Brexit done, you will always say, you know, there wasn't any substance to the argument, people were, were swept along, this is completely illogical. The, the burning of these no, laws... No, 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 Jeremy, I don't blame people. I blame the politicians who were talking through, the, uh, through their hats because, you know, I was in meetings up until the referendum with Brexiteers you see on the, on the airways. And every time I asked them, what's your plan? Are you prepared for Brexit? The answer came back, we're not really good. We're not going to win, so let's not worry with the plan. That is honestly what every single I have a really, had. really good there friend. Was no a really, plan. This was all ideology. I have a really good friend, a really successful businessman, and I'm, not, and I'm not taking any particular side. I was a Brexiteer, probably still am. But he said to me, and I won't name him, um, 
I, I, I genuinely didn't think, you know, I voted for it, but I didn't think it would happen. And I went to bed and I woke up and, 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 and the reality was very different. What, I, what I'm saying to you is, under Boris, it was all quite chaotic and loud and whatever. we've got Brexit done, let's have breakfast, you know, there's breakfast done and all this thing. Um, being swept along, you've just said that those 4,000 laws, illogical and almost impossible and chaotic if you got rid of them straight away. So are we looking, this is my question this morning, are we looking at sensible Sunak again in a calm and balanced way, right, doing doing what needs to be done? Or are we finding that Sunak sitting on the fence and keeping his options open because he maybe has, I don't know, doubts or whatever, because the British public, whether you like this or not, right, the main reason they still don't trust the Labour Party, many of them is, they think they're going to take us back into the European Union. Do you think that's ever likely to happen? Is this the beginning of a softening of a stance? That's really what I'm asking you, Gina. The beginning of reducing the damage, it's not about going back in. I can't see that happening for a generation. But there are lots of things that need to be repaired. And the tools are in the trade and cooperation agreement, and that's where the energy should be. It, not, it should not be about throwing out laws that will basically mean that people don't invest in us, businesses are not confident, and we haven't got a growing economy. This is pure madness. Not for a generation. So Gina Miller believes that we will go back into the European Union in time. Well, I know. I think it's up to the next generation. It won't be us. We, you and I will be, you know, wherever we are. But it'll dead. be for the next generation to decide. Actually, I said dead there. You're much younger than me. That was a bit harsh, wasn't it? Um, it'll be very interesting. Do you think uh, also in terms of the next general election, we've talked... Uh, listen, yesterday the main news, of course, was that horrendous rise again. I mean, a rise of, of, of the 12th consecutive interest rate rise, people's mortgages, people's savings, people's credit card debt, all that sort of stuff. Um, do you, in your mind, believe that the European argument Brexit will be as central to the next election? I know it was obviously the only thing at the last election. Do you think it will be relevant or do you think the cost of living and people's lives, which you're going to say is partly down to Brexit, well, do you think it'll be central to the, the election or not? I think the central to the election will be the economy and the fact that UK productivity will be down about 4% by the end of the 2020s is obviously part of it. We've got to repair the damage of Brexit. That is a big part of boosting our economy and growth and confidence. But it's also, for my mind, why I started the True and Fair Party is because I believe there will be a hung parliament and it's making sure that we actually also bring in checks and balances on politicians so we don't have the corruption and the cronyism we've seen. Uh, Gina, always a pleasure, never a show. We'll have having you on JK Live. Gina Miller, leader of the True and Fair Party. Thank you very much indeed.